Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Want to listen to a story that will age you ten years and a half hours? Huh? Oh, come on, Ed. You can't be happy all the time. <laughs> I'm just going through my mail. Perhaps I can answer a few questions. Let's see. Oh, yes. Yeah, to the lady from Peoria. My answer, no, madam. I've only died once. <laughs> to that transparent man in Detroit, ghosts do not have to pay income tax. And to that dear little lady living in a coffin in San Francisco, a very happy 800th birthday. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, The Death Deal, was written by Milton Lewis and stars Arnold Moss in the role of Roger, with Mercedes McCambridge as Helen and Everett Sloan as Dennis. All right, friends. It's time to turn down the lights, settle yourself comfortably in a chair, and find out how gruesome life can be. Now remember, if you hear someone screaming, it may be you. <laughs> Ready? Then let's get ghoulish. It's early evening. And the rather prosperous-looking gentleman in the diner, whom we shall call Roger Aldrich, looks up at the man sitting next to him when he feels his elbow gently tapped. Roger Aldrich couldn't tell you why he feels a sudden icy tingle in his elbow where the man touched him, or why his heart suddenly throbs with fear as he sees the bloodless white face of the man who now talks to him. Aldrich. Roger Aldrich, that's your name, isn't it? Yes. But we met. This is the first time. Oh, glad to know you, uh... Mr. Mortmain. It's not name, Mortmain. Uh, how do you do? Excuse me for not shaking your hand. I don't shake people's hand as a rule. Oh, why not? People generally don't like it. Is that your car outside the blue one next to the fence? Yes. Don't drive it tonight. Well, why not? You will be killed in it. What makes you think so? I know. Oh, no, really, Mr. Morton, I do think... Oh, wait a minute. Someone's getting into my car. So I see. I left the keys in it. He's driving it away. He won't get very far. I've got to stop him. Hey, come back here. You're too late, Mr. Aldrich. Well, I'll call the police. It won't do any good. Watch. An explosion. The car's going up in flames. Heavens, that nail stole it. I, I would have been killed. Yes, you have another chance to live, Mr. August. How did you know? Who are you? We shall meet again sometime, Mr. August. Good night. <laughs> Yes? What is it? I'm Detective Sergeant Lane of the police department. Here's my shield. May I come in? Yes, of course. Are you Mrs. August, Mrs. Roger August? Yes, I am, Why? Uh, you'd better sit down. I have some very bad news. Bad news? Yes, please sit down. Yes, sir. Your husband was killed in an automobile accident tonight. Roger was killed? Yes, ma'am. Where? Near a country diner. Just a few miles from here. Roger is an excellent father. I don't understand we how We don't he... understand it ourselves yet. It's sort of a freak accident. The car seemed to explode, then oh. the flame shot up. Oh, no. It must have been over in an instant for him. But uh, the body, well, you'll have to come to the morgue and make identification of it in the morning. Uh, are, are, are you quite sure it was my husband's body? Who else could it be? Yes, who else? Uh... I'm sorry to bring you such terrible news, Mrs. August. Uh, may I extend my deepest sympathy? Oh, yes, thank you. I'll call again at 10 in the morning. Good night. Good night. Dennis? Dennis, it's all right to come out now. 
Helen. Finish, I have something very strange to tell you. Yes, I know. I heard what he said. Helen, do you realize what this means for us? You'll have everything. And with this accident, you'll receive double indemnity on the insurance. Please, Dennis, don't talk about it now. But why not? Surely you're not going to pretend that you cared for No, him. I hated him. Well, when something like this happens, you... I'm a little frightened. Oh, why should you be? You're free. We can marry. Yes, I know, but you're trembling, darling. Come here. Yeah, no, Nothing matters with us now. We don't have to live in constant terror any longer. For the first time, I can kiss you and feel that you're really mine. No, Dennis, don't. Oh, who's that? I don't know. You'd better go back into the other room. All right. Hurry. Good evening, Helen. It's Roger. It's Roger. Oh, but it can't be. You... They told me you were dead. You'd like that, wouldn't you? What? You wish I were dead, don't you? Roger, don't. But I'm not. A woman who loved her husband would throw her arms about his neck if he returned as I've returned now. It's just a shock. I'm upset. Are you? Yes. Sit down, Helen. But, Roger... Sit down, I said. Yes. That police officer who was here a moment ago reported that I was dead, didn't he? Yes, I don't understand it. A very strange thing happened, Helen. Maybe before this evening's over, you may have your wish. And I'll be dead, not of your life forever, if that's what you want. You'd like that, wouldn't you, dear? You're being very theatrical. Oh, no. For once in my life, I'm being very practical. I've decided I can't live without you. Well, Roger, you know the alternative. You're making a clumsy attempt to be witty, but as it turns out, that's just how I solved my problem. What's holding you back? I don't believe in suicide. Here. Take my gun. What am I supposed to do? Kill you? Exactly. Oh, but you can't be serious. I am. Consider it, Helen. I've been reported dead. The poor fool who stole my car was burned to death. Identification is impossible, but the police will take your word for it. That the wreck of a person you'll see tomorrow at the morgue is me. You're in a position to commit a perfect murder. You know, Roger, for the first time in years, I find you interesting. I thought you would. Tell me exactly how to murder you. It's quite simple. You have a gun in your hand. Oh, that part is easy. Even pleasant. But how would I get rid of your body? Really, darling, it would be embarrassing to explain away your corpse. In a moment, I'm going to the garage to take the station wagon into town. Why? Where are you going? To the police. If you don't kill me, I want to clear up the matter of the mistaken identity. However, if you want me to die, I uh, suggest you murder me in the garage. Why there? Be so much more convenient. Oh, I see. I won't have to drag your bleeding body through the house. Exactly. But then where would I take you? Well, I suggest the bridge. No one uses it at this hour. My body would be washed out to sea. It would be days before it was found. And again, identification would be practically impossible. And so you worked out a perfect plan. But there must be a catch to it. What? I'm sure you figure me to end up in the electric chair. Even though you may kill yourself to do it. Helen... Well, and if this sounds like the idea of a madman, maybe it is. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever met. I love you beyond reason, despite the fact that I know you have as much character as an alley cat. Tonight, I think it was you, perhaps with the assistance of my very dear friend Dennis, who was responsible for my car blowing up. You think I tried to murder you? It's just it, I don't know. But I can't go on not trusting you, thinking you want to murder me. I've got to know once and for all. Now... Do you understand? Yes. You're right. It is the plan of a madman. But then you always have been a little mad. Well, maybe I am. I know what you do the moment I leave the house and I still come crawling back to you. I've tried a thousand times to walk out and I can't. If you had any money, you'd have blessed me long ago. But you can get all my money only if I die. And so I'm giving you an opportunity because... Because I must know... I must know if you could murder me. But now do you believe that this isn't all some monstrous joke? Yes. I believe you are, sir. But I walk out of here and go to the garage. It may be the last time I, I'll see you. I, 
I should like to kiss you goodbye. You're still my wife, you know. Yes. Oh. Now, there's one thing more. Something I've waited a long time to do. What? This. Ah. That's for Dennis. And that's for all the others. The gun's in your hand, Helen. If you use it, please be thorough. And empty it completely. After the pain you caused me during my life, the least you can do is to let me die quickly. And, by the way, you can tell Dennis he can come out as soon as I leave. Good night, good night, Helen. Dennis. I heard what he said. It's some trick, some trick. No, it's not. It's not a trick. I know him well enough to know that. How you? You're not going to do it, are you? He's testing me, Dennis. And now I'm going to test you. Will you help me? Oh, I... I don't know. Murder... Dennis. We've only a minute to decide. Answer me, Dennis. There he is, Helen. Helen, is that you, Helen? Yes, it's me. Oh, Dennis, too. How very cozy. Oh, where's the gun? Right here. In my hand. I didn't think you had the courage. I... Oh. I... Helen. Helen, are you sure? I'll make certain. Oh, Helen! Put him in the back of the car, Dennis. Then drive to the bridge. Several weeks have passed since Roger Aldrich was murdered. And this evening we find Helen at home alone, moodily staring out the window at the storm that rages outside. Helen. Dennis, why did you come here? I, I must see you. But I told you, I don't want people to talk. Please let me in. I've got to see you. But I don't want you to... Oh, all well, right. Now, what's wrong? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind. What are you talking about? I saw him again tonight. Roger? Yes, Roger, your husband, the man we murdered. Oh, Bigman, go, oh, I must say it. I saw Roger, your husband, the man we killed in the garage, whose body we dropped in the river. Let me see. I... I'm sorry, Helen. I... I didn't mean to become hysterical. I can't help it. No, I suppose you can't. You've always been more of a woman than a man. Tell him. It's perfectly true. You're acting like a frightened schoolgirl. You've no more courage than a worm. Oh, I wonder if you enjoy this abuse you've taken too lately. No, not particularly. I'd like to say something nice to you, but you give me no reason to. I can see now why Roger hated you. You're treating me just like you treated him. And I thought you loved oh, me. Oh, stop it. If you've got something to tell me, let me hear it. All right. He was in my house this time. Not staring through the window as I saw him before or in the garden where I saw him last week. He was in my living room. I saw him walk out, close the door. Darling, why didn't you stop him and apologize for murdering him? You still think this is some sort of joke? No, far from it. But if you don't get a grip on your nerves, something very uncertain may happen. And I have too much to lose to let you go about in the state you're in. I suppose somebody hears about your stupid hallucinations. Somebody who might start investigating. What would you do, Helen? What do you think I'd do? Murder me as you murdered Roger? Darling, please, don't be melodramatic. But you'd kill me. Maybe. Helen. Now, please get out of here. Actually, the notion of murdering you has a certain pleasure which I find very tempting. And don't come back here with any more of your idiotic stories. Good evening, Dennis. <laughs> 
Roger. Yes, Roger. I've been waiting here for you to get home. Hey, you... You're alive? No. Yes, but... But you're sitting there talking to me. How do you know this doesn't exist just in your mind? There are no witnesses to prove my existence. Yet, here I am. You care to touch me to confirm your doubt? No! I don't blame you. You couldn't touch me. I'm dead, Dennis. These are the clothes I wore when I was murdered. Here are the wounds. The blood from the bullets flowing all over my shirt. What? Why did you come here? A few weeks ago, Helen gave me the pistol she used when she murdered me. It was a sort of token, a bond you demanded to seal your partnership in crime. How do you know that? The dead see everything. Tonight, just before you arrived, I saw Helen take the gun out of the desk drawer where you keep it. But it, it's gone. But why did she take it? It might be evidence that would interest the police. If you were found murdered. She really is going to murder me? You've always been weak and stupid, Dennis. But I think her whole plan must be finally clear to you by now. She knows you're going to pieces, and she plans to murder you as soon as possible. Yeah, but, but what can I do? Go back to her. If you don't destroy her, she'll destroy you. Act quickly. Why? Hello? Mrs. Orvis, this is a friend of yours. I'm calling because your life is in danger. What? Dennis Wilcox is on his way to your home to murder you. Goodbye. Hello, hello, who are you? You, hello? I, oh. Yes, who's there? It's me, Dennis. Dennis? Uh, just a moment. Let me in. What do you want? Just to see if I can find something. Why are you going through that bed? Just to make certain that I... Here it is. What? Roger's gun. The one you used to murder him. I thought you had that. It's no use lying any longer, Helen. I know why you stole it from me. You planned to murder me. But you won't get away with it. You're going to die first. Then it stop. No! I... No! Oh. Hell, that... That gun, where did, where did you get that gun? Someone warned me you'd try this. Oh, tell him, tell him, send for, for a doctor. My, my chair. You think <laughs> I'd help you now? You to help me. I, I want to help you. Get it, Doc. Danny? Well done, Helen. Good evening, Helen. You could put the gun down, darling. Don't bother to try to shoot me. Your gun is empty. You... You're alive. Alive? I sometimes wonder. What did you do? Are you really interested, Helen? Maybe you'll be happier if you're put to death and never knew what I did. Put to death? For the murder of Dennis. So that's it. That's what you wanted to happen. Yes, and it will. The police will be here in a moment. And you arranged for that, too? Yes. You must admit I have a certain talent for making arrangements. Why didn't you die when I killed you? Because, darling, though I may be your husband, I don't do everything you want me to. The bullets from the gun I gave you back in the garage were black. They were... Yes. It was easy. I knew you and Dennis wouldn't take the trouble to examine my body. And you counted on Dennis's weakness to arrange for my execution. Yes. You may not love me, Helen, but you do know me well. As soon as I hear the police sirens coming up the road, I'll leave. You won't get away with this. Oh, yes, I will. I have a car waiting outside everything at all. Why did you do this to me? Why? Why? Because I wanted to discover if you're a murderess. And I found out you were. And so I arranged for you to pay in full. For everything you... I won't die. I won't. Silence. Yes, I... Well, then, you'll have a chance to explain why you won't die to the gentleman who'll come through that door in a moment. I'm afraid I must go now. And I'm afraid I must use the back door. Goodbye. Roger, take me with you. Don't be ridiculous. Please, Roger. Take your hands off me. No, Roger, no. <laughs> the 
forgive me for being a little rough. Open the door. Oh, just a moment. We've received the same telephone call of the... Oh, I see I'm too late. You murdered him. No, officer, no. My husband murdered him. Your husband? Yes. He just ran out of the house. You'd better go after him quickly. This is obvious. Your husband is dead. No, he's not. But you identified him in the morgue. I was with him. But that was a mistake. I didn't... Oh, what's the use? You wouldn't believe me anyway. What kind of call did you receive about me? Someone said you planned to kill Mr. Wilcox. And I see that you have. You're under arrest for murder, Mrs. August. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Logwick. Who are you? Don't you remember me? Mr. Morton? Yes. What are you doing in my car? Waiting for you to come along. I once did you a favor. I thought that you might drive me just to the crossroads. It's difficult to walk in this storm. Yes, of course. I, I'll take you wherever you want to go. Uh, Mr. Aubrey. Yes? I must say, I don't think you did very well with the chance to live that I gave you. What do you know about it? Everything. Oh, how? Who are you, anyway? Perhaps I'm just someone you imagine. Someone who doesn't exist. But I can... I can see you. I can speak to you. We can see and speak to the creations of our minds. Sometimes they are more real than the people of flesh and blood who can be killed. Your name? Your name, Mr. Morton. I know what it means. Do you? Yes. It means the hand of death. Where did you come to me tonight? Do you think I've done wrong? Can't you see I couldn't go on living with her, but I had to become free of her? Now I'll be able to make something of my life. Will you... Oh, uh, Mr. August, uh, drop me here, please. Very well. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. August, before I go, I have a message for you. Here. It's written out. Good night. Good, good night. Message. All right. Better read it. Where's the dashboard light? Mr. August, by the time you finish reading this, it will be too late. What, man? What did... The car? There's something wrong! <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you next time Roger's alive, he'll know better than to marry a woman who's going to kill him. And wasn't that heaven a charming girl? The kind of woman who loves you till you die. And she'll see to it that you die soon. Which brings us to the moral of our story, which we found on the walls of the tomb of King Tut, Tut, Tut. Never. Ask your wife if she'd like to murder you. You may be surprised at her answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for service men and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Mm-hmm.